Welcome back to Jeff Willett's Muscle Hub, home of my weekly Q&A show and all of my YouTube video updates. Got a good selection of questions this week, so we're going to jump right in. I'm going to apologize in advance for any of these screen names or names that I don't quite pronounce right. I shall try my best. Question number one comes from Pantera, and this is through YouTube. And they want to know, which rate of weight loss do you think is optimal? You know, when, when getting ready for a contest or trying to lose body fat, I don't set a weight loss goals because weight loss isn't the goal fat loss is. Now that being said, over a period of time, you should see a trend, an overall trend or lowering of your body weight, but I don't think the best way to go about that is to set sheer weight loss goals. Because remember, if you're competing in a bodybuilding contest or figure or fitness or bikini, men's physique, any of them, their body composition contest is what they are, not weight loss contest. So again, we want to we want to build muscle, we want to lose fat over time, we're going to go by visual cues that we're looking at, but not specifically any weight loss goals per week. So we're going to, over the, over the long haul, you should see a trend in your weight dropping, but that's not your primary goal. Remember, primary goal is fat loss, not weight loss. Number two comes from Abid Khan, and this comes through YouTube. And he wants to know, what are my thoughts on the whole thing about one to five reps build strength, and six to 12 reps, this is for hypertrophy. What do I feel about that? Well, that's a great question. I kind of get that a lot. And for this one, I kind of went back a little bit and I thought I would brush up on some exercise physiology. And in doing so, I got out one of my old books from college. And the interesting story about this is exercise physiology class at Adrian College with one of my favorite professors, uh, Kevin Dar, was really where I started to get my uh, theories more toward Maxwell T style training before I even knew what Maxwell T was. And you can hear about this in my Q&A seminar when I talk about kind of my evolution of max LT training. But in any event, when I started learning more about actual exercise physiology and what's going on with muscle building and strength building, that's when some of the traditional bodybuilding methods started not to make much sense to me. And so which kind of leads us into this question. One to five reps is for strength, six to 12 or whatever is for hypertrophy. You hear that, but to me that's flawed logic because strength and muscle size, there's too much overlap and too much of that is intertwined to really differentiate that there's some magic number that once you pass that, it's no longer for strength and once you get into here, it's then for muscle hypertrophy. There's two real factors that affect strength and one is neural adaptation and the other is muscle hypertrophy or the, the big, larger cross-sectional area of muscle fibers. And you know, again, both are really intertwined. And we do know that uh, beginning lifters over the first probably 20 weeks, most of the strength gains come from neural adaptation. But then for more advanced lifters that have been lifting 20 weeks and, and beyond, then strength gains are coming from muscle hypertrophy. So you can't, in my mind, it doesn't make sense to think you can lift for just one or the other. And I've been doing now a 24 year case study essentially on how to build muscle with myself as a primary test subject. And 16 of those years have been through the Max OT principles. And what I found to be best for drug-free muscle development is overloading the muscle in a four to six rep range. Don't overcomplicate the process. And if you think about it, a bigger muscle is gonna be a stronger muscle. And one other thing I'm gonna to say to this is, I say drug-free muscle. This is not a uh, judgment on those who choose to use steroids, but this is just a fact. If the information you're getting is coming from a drug-based perspective, that can change the game of how you train and you can get all kinds of re different varying results. If you're talking drug-free muscle building, without a doubt, what I've found to be the best, again, over 24 years of doing this, basic max OT principles, four to six reps, progressive overload, that's gonna be the key to maximizing your results. Question three comes from KLVS 13 City. This is through YouTube. And they wanna know what's the best way to get rid of water? What are foods that you can use and foods to avoid? And I'm assuming they're talking more from a competitive leanness standpoint, um, I don't think you really try to target getting rid of water. I think that's another one of those kind of myths. And sometimes when you hear people say they were holding water, then in reality they were just too fat. They weren't in good enough shape. If you're stripped down, if you're lean from months and months of smart dieting and smart training, your water really isn't an issue. So I don't do anything specifically to try to rid water. I just work on getting ultra lean through executing these really smart principles for a long period of time. Number four is from Irfan Jethwa, and this came through Facebook. And he wants to know, if he increases the weight and only gets three reps, what should he do? Should he reduce the weight or take assistance on trying to get that fourth rep? And this is coming from the basis of we're trying to get four to six reps, at least four on our own and no more than six. And to answer the question, it somewhat depends on what rep set do you, what set do you get that out? In other words, if you're doing three sets of an exercise and you only get three reps on your first, one, first set and you got two more, that's probably a little bit heavy. You probably need to be a little bit lighter than that. So in that scenario, I probably would reduce the weight and then try to work for those three sets. 
But if it's set two or set three and you only get three reps, that's not a terrible thing. I would just stop at that last one you can get on your own. I would not do a forced rep to try to get the fourth one because remember, you know, four to six reps is the guideline, but that doesn't mean three, three is bad or, or seven is terrible. I mean, that's the guideline. And you'd actually rather be closer to the fourth or fifth type of rep later into your sets. You don't always want to be getting six reps every set because that means you're not pushing it hard enough. So again, getting only three reps on set two or three of an exercise is not a bad thing. I would just go as hard as you can. If you only can get three, just go ahead and stop at that third one, mark it down, and then work to progress from there in your workouts that are coming up. Question five is from Kenneth Stahl, and this also comes from Facebook. And he says, I hear a lot on the internet that you should train with high reps because heavy weight is bad for your joints and ligaments. And this is another one that I get kind of frequently and the one that we can kind of fall back to old exercise physiology too. I don't think that there's any uh, evidence to show that intense training with heavy weights is any more detrimental or harmful on joints and ligaments than any type of intense training is. In fact, you know, I, I could make the argument that with Max OT style training, it's, it's less of impact on the, on the joints because we're doing lower volume, we're doing lower reps, we're doing lower frequency, we're taking a week off after every eight to 10. So you compare that to high volume type training where you're doing a lot of sets, a lot of reps, very little rest. I mean, I think you can make the argument that this is less impactful on joints and ligaments. And using myself as an example, after doing very good execution of the principles for, for many years, I never found any issues or never had any issues with that other than, you know, anytime you're pushing your body to the limits and testing what you can handle, you're, you're susceptible to some injuries, but I don't think it's the style of training as much as it is just pushing yourself to those limits. So I want to remind everyone to go ahead and continue to submit your questions to me through Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. You can hashtag them AskJW, and if I choose your question, I'll read that and read your name on the air. So thank you all for tuning in. Now let's go out and execute.